And hello, hello, Facebook world. Welcome to episode number 66 of Window Treatment Friday Live. I am flying solo today. I'm going to bring up my presentation here on um, Instagram. So yeah, I'm flying solo today. Uh, my friend and co-pilot Kim is babysitting her most adorable niece, Liliana. We were just on um, for a couple of minutes before I went live and uh, she waved at me. Oh, she is so precious. This little baby is about nine months old and uh, Kim gets to babysit her today. So she deserves a little break from the WTF. We are here every Friday, you guys. Anybody who is listening to us for the first time, we're here every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Please grab your coffee or your drink or your water. I have my uh, little treat here. It's done. I'm going to grab my water for all the talking. Mm. And uh, every Friday morning, Kim and I, or me solo, or sometimes Kim solo, we chat about window treatments, everything that has to do with drapery panels and valances and cornices and pleats and lift systems and all the challenges and the trials and tribulations of our window treatment um, world and life. So thank you, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. And today is episode number 66. And I'm just going to tell you about some of the installations that Vitalia Inc. has been having lately and um, some of the stories on the back end, some of the things that we often don't see or hear when we see the beautiful thing. But maybe I can give you just a little bit of uh, kind of like the background of what's going on there. So thank you for joining me, everyone. But before I go into the window treatment world, I wanted to share something. Oh, wait, hang on. I have to do it on Instagram too. How do I do it? Wait, hold on a second. Hmm, that's interesting. How do I do it on Instagram? Hold on just one second. Uh, hold on, hold on. Hmm. Well, this will be interesting. All right, so we'll do it this way. So before I go into the world of window treatments and just tell you about some of the latest installs, I wanted to share something with you. Um, yesterday, Vitalia Inc. had a very special day. So everybody that you see here, these are the wonderful people that uh, work for Vitalia Inc. window treatments. Um, there is uh, Boris, who's our seamster, there, then there's me, I'm going from left to right, then there's me, then there's Tom, who's our installer, Beata, who is our window treatment specialist, Lisa, who's our general manager, and Vitali, who also happens to be my husband, and he's our CTO, which is the technical um, chief technical officer, and uh, every doesn't fail every day we go honey help us with something or other and the computer's not working something's not printing so he's our cto so this is my amazing team and yesterday was our kind of um end of the summer party and uh, my staff appreciation day i they they do an amazing job every day and every so often every few months i want to do something special for them so yesterday we finished our day a bit early. We were shooting for one o'clock, but some of the installs went a little longer. So we got together around three and uh, we had a wonderful time uh, with, uh, with a brief lunch and uh, just hanging out at the Newtown Athletic Club. So anybody from the Bucks County area, which is where we're located outside of Philadelphia, northeast of Philly, Bucks County, there's a great gym with like an escape resort type situation. And uh, it's called uh, it's called the New Town Athletic Club, like I said. And it has a beautiful pool and a, and a jacuzzi. And we had we rented a cabana, which is where you're seeing us here. So uh, with some drinks and snacks and food and lunch, and we just hang out for a few hours. And it was really terrific to get out of the office to not be so bogged down with all the challenges and the everything that we have to go through in our window treatment world, and just enjoy each other enjoy beautiful weather we got super lucky we had a horrible storm here in the northeast the day before and i was just holding my fingers crossed to <laughs> to in in prayer that the weather will be okay and it was it was a glorious glorious day not a cloud in the sky 
And uh, we spent a few hours together outside of the office, just getting to know each other better. You know, some of us have been working together for years and years, and there's still, we were like, oh, you did this? Oh, you're from here? We didn't know that. So it's always good to get out of the office. And for me, it was just a way to show my appreciation for my, my gratitude for my incredible staff who go above and beyond every single day for everything that we do here at Vitalia Inc. So anyway so that that's a little that's a little behind the scenes of what happens uh, here at Vitalia Inc window treatments and specifically what happened yesterday so um let's see how and now I want to go into uh, my next pr the, the the first project that I wanted to share with you and um, it used to work when you just scrolled and now it's not working so that's great so we are going to exit out of here Ooh. Uh, and find a different picture. So here it is. All right, so this is the first project that I wanted to share with you today. This is actually a model home for a builder called Fox Lane Builders and for a design firm called Gasic Design Group. If you guys have been a long standing listener of our WTF, you know that I mentioned Gasic Design Group quite a bit. We do a lot of window treatment projects for them and especially model homes. So this particular one is called Falcon Ridge. It's a development in um, just outside of Philadelphia in the Manyank area. And Fox Lane Builders is a really great building company. They build all over the Philly area. They are uh, there on time, they're quality, um, they have integrity, they've honest, they've just really been enjoying working with them, um, mostly through the also switch photo on Facebook. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> I appreciate it. See, Kim, she, she's like my assistant in, in the background today. <laughs> I appreciate you, honey, very much. <laughs> and listen, you guys, if any of you have any questions about anything that I'm saying, by all means, please put it into the chat. Let me know uh, what else I can share with you because sometimes some of these projects are so innate to what we do and it, it's, it's hard to sometimes know what's what kind of detail needs to be shared because to us it's just kind of like well of course that's what it is so anyway so this project is this living room in the model home by fox lane builders for the gasic design group and we did the window treatments but the, i think the first thing that jumps out here is not really the window treatments but the way they juxtaposition the furniture i mean how actually maybe not even so much even the furniture but the rug right so the furniture the the uh, sofa, the sectional is against the window and the two chairs are kind of facing the sofa. So that's not so different than any of you would ever do something like this, but it is the rug, the having it kind of on the diagonal and a skew that really makes the whole room kind of it just like you almost have to get your bearings first, right? And understand what's happening here. So that just shows you how incredibly talented the Gasic Design Group is. It's led by the also very talented leader, Richard Gasic. He's the principal designer and kind of the visionary and the leader for, for everything that they do. And uh, we've done a lot of model homes for them. And so uh, the window treatments are stationary panels. On the wide window on the right, you see the pair of panels flanking the window with decorative metal, decorative hardware leading um, mounted all the way up to the ceiling, which is what we do all the time in model homes as well as residential. We try to go as high in the, uh, in the room, as high to the ceiling as feasibly possible because it just elevates the eye, makes the room taller and bigger. And, and then the other window treatments are on the windows flanking the fireplace. And here you'll see that we're putting them on the, also on the rod all the way to the ceiling. So both rods are on the same level in the same plane. And, but we didn't put two drapery panels on each window. We just put one drapery panel on each window. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, number one is we didn't want to quite overwhelm this room. It already has a lot going on, especially with the rug being askew and you're kind of like not exactly sure what's happening there at first glance. Uh, we didn't want to also overpower it with drapery panels. Number two, you see that this designer did a really interesting um, backdrop to the fireplace. Um, this is a wallpaper and they, they do a lot of interesting variations with wallpaper. You also see a lot of molding happening in the room. You'll see that this molding is not white. This is something that they've been using a lot also. So they do 
they use uh, wallpaper and paint and molding a lot of times to create really memorable spaces, something different and something that a potential buyer would really remember, which is what model merchandising really is all about. So we didn't want to have that second panel that's close that would have been closer to the fireplace to encroach on everything that they have done with the molding and the wallpaper. And then the final third and the final reason has to do with economics. So if you guys any of you have ever done a model home uh, merchandising, you know that it has to be very particular in terms of um, money spent. The designer gets so much in, in their budget and that budget is set per square foot. So they have to make it work between window treatments and furniture and paint and molding and accessories and everything that goes into it, they have to make it work. So sometimes we, um, off, not sometimes, oftentimes we um, have to make trade-offs between what would have been even maybe um, more enhanced look with additional window treatments, but we have to counterbalance it with some of the budgetary constraints. And if we don't have the money, then we have to take it out somewhere. And uh, sometimes it's in window treatment, sometimes it's in furniture accessories. So it just kind of depends. But we have enough of window treatments happening already in this room. We didn't really need any more. So I don't think it took anything away from here. So. So that's just a little bit about the background of uh, model merchandising and how it works and what kind of different um, decisions you have to make. You know, it's not like in residential where you say, well, we're over budget. I know it, I know it's not what we plan, but would you like to proceed, Mr. Customer, Mrs. Customer? And it's up to them to say yes or no. If they're really in love with something, they can. If they're not, they're like, okay, we're not going to do it. Um, but with model home merchandising, it, the budget is very, very strict. It's usually pretty low, actually. It's nearly not as high as you think one would do because um, just um, there's a lot of economic constraints there. <laughs> Let's put it that way. All right. Um, yeah. All right, so we'll go to the next picture here. Oh, it says choose a different asset. Oh, I see how they do it. Okay, all right. So, so the next project that I wanted to share, this was a home at the, at the New Jersey shore in um, Stone Harbor. The designer for this project is Z Domus Design, also another, a designer that I've mentioned quite a bit here. We do a lot of projects for, for Rose. Rose Zafarino is a wonderful and talented and super smart Chiquita who runs the firm of multiple people. And this was an amazing project that we just recently installed, maybe a couple of months ago, but we started this project, I believe, last fall or maybe early this year. So it's been about nine or maybe even 10 months in the making. And the the house is really interesting because it's kind of like a, it's a compound, if you will. It is owned by the sort of a matriarch and the patriarch and they have um, three daughters and the daughters have husbands and those families have children so this whole house is for that entire family and they have multiple master suites so one suite for each family essentially and this was the master bedroom for one of the daughters now the rest of the daughters are very um, um, I was, I want to say chill, but <laughs> um, they're a little bit more kind of subdued in their taste. They're more neutral. They go for neutral colors and more of a um, kind of subdued and, and chill color palettes and patterns. Well, this one, not so much. Um, she was amazing to work with. I mean, they were all quite amazing to work with, but this particular daughter she wanted this wallpaper now we didn't have anything to do with wallpaper we just did the window treatments but rosa farino the designer she's the one who picked this wallpaper introduced it to to the daughter to the client and of course she loved it um i i love it too it's 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 bamboo it's geometric it's it has a lot going on um, you can't quite see the rug, but it is um, like a cheetah print, um, not in the brown color, but also in that 
teal color, kind of like the, the wallpaper is. So, so this client was not afraid of color. It was not afraid. She was not afraid of pattern and mixing pattern too. Um, now we did decide to not go quite as high with pattern on the window treatments because it probably would have been too much. But what I wanted to tell you about here is the hardware. This hardware is kind of bamboo looking rod with bamboo looking brackets and bamboo looking rings and bamboo looking um, end caps finials. Um, it's not something that we get to do a lot nowadays. Uh, this hardware came from a company in Texas and Kim, I know you're listening and you actually is the one who, who you are the one who introduced me to this company. And I, I'm, the name is escaping me. So if, you, if you're hearing me, maybe you'll remember things like the, the curtain rod company or so, something like that. Type it in if you remember. But they're quite amazing because their customer service is really great. They're represent multiple multiple lines and uh, in this room specifically we were looking for a bamboo looking rod and so bamboo looking rod is what we got with their help now the the reason that it's kind of different is because it's not something that we use nowadays i think we we have the we had these rods back in the 80s and the 90s we used them quite a bit we we had like these big chunky finials on the ends but it's not something that we use nowadays Nowadays, it's all about metal rods, skinny rods, uh, super small finials, super small rings, sometimes even no rings to make it as streamlined as and simple as possible. This project, besides all of the other things why it was interesting, this particular room to me was interesting because we got to, to do these really cool rods. We got introduced to a brand new company, which was really cool for us. And ultimately, it turned out really great for the customer as well. And uh, she loved it. We loved it. it turned out beautiful. Um, these are functional draperies. They're actually made in uh, like a sheer linen-y type fabric, but they're lined. So, so they do block the light when they're drawn. All right. So next, I want to talk to you about uh, on Instagram, it says you have to choose different assets. Okay, here's a different asset. <laughs> I guess that's the picture. All right, so this project was done in the town called Brynathen. Brynathen is also outside of Philadelphia because that's where we're based. So anybody who's listening to us right now in the Philadelphia area, hopefully you know where Brynathen is. It's in um, Huntington Valley area. And it, it this house directly overlooks the um, Brynathen Cathedral. So the the background is beautiful. In the next picture, I'll show you what, what the outside looks like. And, and this house, oh, the, the designer for this house was um, Angela Herter Interiors. She's a wonderful, kind, generous, just a beautiful soul. I've been working with her for a few years now, quite a few years now, and it's been a wonderful experience. So she's the designer for this project. And this house is actually a LEED certified house. So if you guys know anything about the LEED certification, it, it has very high standards for environmental safe and environmental sustainability. A lot of, um, it is design elements group for the hardware. Uh, I don't know, Kim, I think it is, but it's, I know it's out of Texas. <laughs> So, so back to the lead house, it has to be environmentally safe, environmentally sustainable. A lot of the components and um, parts come from um, Europe, Germany specifically, actually all over the world, and they have to pass very specific and high standards for it being um, a house of a certain um, kind of standard and um, elevation. So, so that, that's what this was. Um, and we were just so very privileged that we were able to participate in it. Ah, somebody calling, so hopefully it didn't bump me off too much. So I wanted to highlight this project because it's not very often that we put window treatments on the inside of the door. Uh, we usually take them up above, as I was showing you in the earlier picture, we take it all the way to the ceiling oftentimes. And this was one of those situations where 
the door was so big as it was and you see that arch window um, on the top and there's also lots of molding between the arch window and the door there really wasn't enough room to put it anywhere up there so and plus the depth of the door was so big that it just made a lot of sense to put it on the inside so let me see if i can there it is so let me just pick what's called a different asset here it is so uh, you can't quite see the Brinathan Cathedral, but it's right behind those bushes. So that view is just unbelievably gorgeous. Um, so this is a, um, a ripple fall drape. <laughs> I always have to think about it. I always want to say it's an S curve because if you look at it from the top, it kind of curves like this as an S. But this is a ripple fall drape mounted on um, Kirsch um, Architrack rod. You don't really see the rod because there's actually molding the way that the builder has done it. They've created molding for us, essentially making a pocket. So we put the rod behind that crown molding in in the door so but it's it's mounted on the basic um, architrack rod um, made specifically for ripple fold drapes so that's what these are now i can tell you a little secret behind these actually let me step back anytime you make ripple fold drapes they're actually very difficult to get right i should say they're not so maybe difficult to produce but unlike the pleated drapes they have no room for mistake and what I mean by that is um, I'm specifically referring right now to the length of the drape. So with pleated drapes, you have the ability to move the drape up or down by adjusting the pin on the back of the drape. So if you move the pin down, the drape actually goes up. If you, mean, if you move the pin up, the drape actually goes down. Thank you, Kim, for agreeing with me, right? So... And that variance of going up or down may be anywhere between a quarter of an inch to sometimes even half an inch, depending what kind of ring, depending how high it is, depending on how you're looking at, at the drape, what your vantage point is. And believe it or not, in the window treatment world, when it comes to the lengths of the drapes, quarter of an inch to half an inch makes a huge, huge difference. With the ripple fold drapes, you don't have that kind of flexibility. You don't have pins, you have snaps. The snap, but once there's a, a female snap and a male snap, once they're put together, there is no opportunity and no flexibility to go up or down. So if your length is not exactly where you need it to be, then your drape is either too far off the floor or too, or too much on the floor. And this is exactly actually what happened to us here, unfortunately. So I'm kind of pulling back the curtain here, metaphorically and literally. <laughs> um, this was a pretty tough fabric it had a lot of linen and it what's called grew that's what we refer to in our industry right so when the fabric um stretches and it um essentially grows right so you 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 on the table it measured 100 inches and then you hang it up and the linen grows because of the natural fibers and instead of 100 inches all of a sudden it's 101 inch and one may say well what's the big deal you know it's just one inch you know move the rod up well here we don't have the opportunity to move it up because it's inside mount so anytime you have an inside mount situation and you have a ripple fold drape you have to be incredibly incredibly um careful and meticulous and and then even if you've done that, which we always do in our workroom, then sometimes you just don't know exactly how the fabric will behave and what exactly will happen. So our installer puts up the rod, he puts up the drape, he hangs it up, he lets it go, boom, it's on the floor. And we're like, oh my God, no, please don't tell me. But the good thing is this um, client, this project rather, is very close to us. So Brynathen is only about 15 to 20 minutes from our workroom. And we actually have a workroom in-house, which makes it very, um, which makes us very agile, very flexible. And it's quite possible for us to move off the table what we're working on at this very minute to bring the drape in to hem it by one inch yes we have to undo the hem re-hem it and run it back over to the installer now do we like doing it of course not um, does it kind of create a wrinkle and adds a monkey wrench to the whole process of course it does but the reality of it is is things like that happen and they happen quite a bit especially in situations where your um, leeway and your flexibility is so limited by everything that I just said, the 
um, ripple fold, the inside mount, the linen fabric. So um, we were able to get it done. And at the end of the day, the client is happy, we're happy, the installer is happy. <laughs> um, and it just created a beautiful, beautiful product. And uh, also created a great story that I could share with you, right? The little um, trials and tribulations of behind the scenes. All right. Uh, interesting how they do it now. So you guys, if you wanted to have more of ideas like that and uh, knowing what to show your clients for their window treatments, if you're looking for ideas and wondering what's possible on different window types, that's exactly why we at Vitalia Inn created a free lookbook and we're offering to you as a gift. So the lookbook is called 37 and a half window treatment ideas to use immediately, steal, swipe and make your own on your next design project. It is filled with inspiration and education and you can grab yours at vitaliainc.com. So make sure that you um, have it. So the next time you have a question or wondering what's possible for your client, you can just refer to this lookbook and um, get Get inspired and have different ideas. And then from my wonderful friend and co-pilot Kim at Windowworks, um, there's also another free gift for you. This is something that Luann had written a little while back. She called it 10 things to know about custom window treatments. And this is perfect for somebody who is new to the window treatment game, who is not as familiar, who doesn't have as much experience, but wants to have kind of window treatment 101 and a basic understanding of what window treatments are about. So just to get that foundational knowledge and um, level of education, this is a free gift for you and you can grab yours at windowworksnewjersey.com and also make sure to check out Luann's podcast. Now Luann's podcast, A Well-Designed Business, is uh, the first place where window treatment series um, appeared. It was maybe two or three years ago that Luann brought me in to co-host a regular series that we called Window Treatment Friday, or we lovingly refer to it as WTF. <laughs> because if you guys are familiar with window treatments, if you have ever done one project, 10 projects, or 100 projects, I know that you have had your WTF moment. So <laughs> yes, we do it on Friday. Yes, we call it Window Treatment Friday, but there's also a really uh, big correlation to like, oh my God, what just happened as what happened in that um, Bryn Athen project, right? So make sure to listen to Luann and I banter about window treatments. We we do that there on the podcast more from the business perspective and the business standpoint. We talk a lot about the um, business aspects of running a window treatment business or a window treatment um, portion of the interior design business. It doesn't have this visual element that this medium presents us with. So there it's more about how to be organized, how to sell, how to position yourself, how to brand yourself, um, how to deal with difficult clients, how to deal with difficult situations. So that's what we, Luann and I talk about there on her podcast, A Well-Designed Business as part of the window treatment series. And of course, Kim and I here show you pictures and eye candy and, um, just give the visual perspective to this whole topic. So make sure if you are in the uh, greater, um, in the in New York metro area, and you're looking for support with window treatments, whether you are an interior designer or an, a consumer looking for uh, window treatment ideas, if you have any, if you need any help um, treating your windows, covering your windows, cutting out the glare, creating privacy, elevating your aesthetic with window treatments inside of the window and with awnings outside of the window, and you live in the um, greater, uh, in the New York metro area, please give Window Works a call, an email, a shout out. They also make sure to follow them on Instagram. And if you are in the Philadelphia area, I would love for you to contact me and us here at the 
at, at Vitalia Inc. Window Treatments and Awnings. Now, we service interior designers exclusively. We are a one-stop shop, a concierge level, wide glove service, your go-to resource for all things window treatments and related products like shades, blinds, shutters, motorization, valances, drapery panels, anything that has to do with window treatments and you're an interior designer. If you're looking for support, if you're looking for someone to really have your back, we are here for you. We've worked with many, many, many interior designers in our area. And we also do projects um, all the way um, up and down the East Coast too for local interior designers. So we would love to hear from you if you need any kind of support with that. So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. This was fun. This was a lot of talking, actually. I guess I don't realize, you know, when Kim and I do it together, you kind of have a chance to breathe a little and take a little break. But this was fun nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you got a little bit of, of inspiration and education. And uh, I would love to see you here every Friday at 9 o'clock. Uh, grab your coffee. Join us because every Friday, Kim and I talk about all aspects of window treatments, be that a pleat, be that a style, be that a window, be that a challenging situation or a WTF moment, which is how we lovingly refer to these episodes. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to sign off, but I will see you here next Friday because if it's Friday, it's WTF Live. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great long Labor Day weekend. Bye-bye.